Academy. Every week we take on some of the most uh, interesting and important issues in digital marketing. And, and today is no exception. Uh, I'm really excited uh, that we're going to be talking about, can anybody hear me getting heard in an overcrowded world? We've all experienced that feeling where you're not sure um, why your blog post isn't getting uh, attention, why your social media post is only being liked and shared by your mother. Um, we all know that this is a uh, busy, cacophonous, uh, digitally oriented world, and it's really, really hard to get heard. And so today's uh, speaker, Yvette Grove, is going to be addressing that point. Uh, before we get to her presentation, I did want to announce uh, for the first time uh, publicly that we have launched uh, an extraordinary program. It's a uh, five-week training in partnership with Pinecrest, which is uh, a municipality here in the Miami area. It's called How to Find Customers Online. It's five one-hour sessions uh, where we're going to go over how to market yourself during COVID-19. Um, if you're interested in enrolling, uh, seats are filling up fast. Uh, we have more than 300 people have registered um, and we're down to the last 50. This is funded by a, a grant that we received uh, from the Federal CARES Act. Um, and so you just go to bizhack.com and register now. Um, the course starts next Monday, but you're able to register anytime in the month of November and uh, we strongly encourage you to attend. It's gonna be five one hour lectures specifically focused on, on marketing during COVID-19 and how to uh, pivot your marketing uh, to adapt to the new um, reality. Uh, very excited by the kind of response that we're getting. We only opened up registrations less than a week ago and we've already had uh, more than 300 businesses from around the world sign up um, if you are a Pinecrest storefront business, there's actually additional funding for one-on-one, -on -one co uh, for personalized coaching in small groups with BizHack certified instructors. So for Pinecrest storefront businesses, uh, there's an additional uh, layer of opportunity here as well. But we did decide uh, as, an as a gift to the community uh, to open this up to everybody in the community so that you can participate and get the advantage of the, the lectures and the lessons that we're gonna be doing. So as you know, we come here every Wednesday for our uh, BizHack Live. Uh, South Florida Integrated Marketing Association and Miami Marketers are our season two partners. We're very grateful to them. Encourage you if you're a marketer to get involved with them. Coming up after this week is next week, we're gonna be talking about the seven keys to exponential marketing. This is with uh, EXO, uh, Exponential Organizations. This is a really exciting one. Um, we're going to be doing this as part of Global Entrepreneurship Week. The week after that, uh, in partnership with Emerge Americas, we're doing a, I'm going to be leading a session on free tools to find your ideal customer online. We're going to talk about tools that Google, Facebook uh, offer that are free and extremely powerful to help you find your ideal target audience online. And then Finally, uh, this is a kind of your last chance to get a season pass, which gives you an RSVP for all of the remaining sessions that we have for this semester, uh, for the year, and also to support this effort so it can continue into 2021. So with that, I wanted to do a quick intro of Yvette Grove. Um, Yvette is someone whom I uh, uh, admire deeply. Uh, she says that her superpower is helping people clarify what they want and setting their anchor point, creating their why not strategy and connect them to the right people and resources. So Yvette has worked um, as a catalyst, a connector and a cheerleader. She right now is the director of growth for Paragon Realtors, which is in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, she's also a book author of Lily's Delicious Different Day. Um, Yvette and I got to know each other through a mastermind group that Brett Turkel, uh, um, that Brett, Bruce Turkel put together, and it was an amazing experience to get to know you, Yvette, and I'm so thrilled uh, to welcome you to BizHack Live, and we're going to look forward to learning from you today. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to be here. I love what BizHack does, 
and is doing for small businesses and entrepreneurs. I'm a, uh, I'm a small business and entrepreneur advocate. I would love to hear from y'all. Um, you can throw it in the chat if you want or raise your hand and speak up. But uh, what, where are you all in your business? Are you just starting? Are you trying to figure out what your business is? Let me know because I really like to make this personalized and relevant to you. Um, where there's a whole lot of noise out there. Uh, one of the things I used to teach when I mostly would work with entrepreneurs is um, really kind of a bootstrapping, um, will the dogs eat the dog food type process. And part of that is really figuring out who you are and who your client is and how to clear through that noise. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, can anybody hear me? So let me know. Um, please throw up in the chat real quick um, what you're doing, what your business is, or if you're just starting. Let me know where you are. If you're, you've started and you're struggling and that's why you're interested in BizHack, um, or if you're looking for an opportunity, if you'll throw that in the chat, um, business three years feel, still feel like a startup. I get that. What kind of business? Um, That's me. It's a training academy. <laughs> and then Ross, uh, Premier Architect, founded 2004. Great. So you're trying to figure out how to, you know, stay relevant and out there. That's fantastic. Small graphic design for 20 years, but only had an online presence, okay, in the last two. Okay, so y'all are pretty much established businesses, it looks like, and so um, we're gonna talk more from that point of view. A lot of people said, oh, do you help new agents? And I'm like, no, I help seasoned agents too. And they go, well, what do you do for them? Well, as you know, for the you that have been in business for a long time, staying relevant, uh, staying top of mind, right? So that's the, that's the big thing. If you're a service provider, you gotta stay top of mind. If you're a product, you have to stay top of mind. So all of those things that we're trying to um, decide, how do we get heard? So I, my favorite answer when I ask people, so who's your client? Who are, you, who are you selling to? Who do you want to sell to? Jeff, what did they tell you? Everybody, right? Do you hear that? You know, they're like, oh, I sell to everybody. Well, if in fact you do, that's great. However, if you're in the digital world, you're not gonna be heard, right? Even um, in, the, in the print world, you're not gonna be heard because you're talking to everybody. So I, my example is this, if you walk into a party and there's a couple hundred people in there and you just start talking, just stand in the room and start talking, is anybody gonna hear you? No, and they might think you're crazy. So what we wanna do is go, okay, well, who in that party do you wanna to talk to and why? Right, so we're gonna we're gonna start there. So, Lily, if you want to pop up the slides, um, we'll kind of and we can share a screen. Um, the first question is really, who are you, and what is your product? Um, since most of you already have a product, we're not going to talk about how to figure that part out. But we're gonna really talk about can any how did how are we going to get heard? How do you find your voice? How do you know who your client is? For those of you who've been in business for a long time, um, okay, Julie, I like that. She's a health and wellness, plant-based lifestyle learning. COVID destroyed her growth. And she's currently looking for other opportunities too. So we'll talk about that. Um, so for those of you, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, one, we have to do things a lot more online now than ever. And so there's even more noise. So how are we gonna get heard? And it starts with you, who are you? And, and how are you gonna connect with people, right? So the, there's a marketing technique that's out there right now. And I don't know if you talk about this in your class, Dan, but uh, it is, I was watching a video on a facial thing, like it was a facial one. And they kept talking about the founder of it and not him creating it, but really just who he was, what his character was like, the uh, relationships he had had with these other people and how they just thought so much of him as a person. And I thought, okay, well, great. Now tell me more about the face one. Uh, but it really was more about him. Well. As things happen, about a week later, I go to a class 
on social media marketing. And there, one of the things he said is if you're new in business or, and you don't really have testimonials because testimonials, if you're in the big biz hack course, you're going to learn about testimonials and referrals and things like that. Uh, but one of the things that's really important is to get other people talking about you. That's the, Google loves that. That's what Google is looking for these days. So how do you get them talking about you, even on Facebook and things like that? Well, you get them talking about who you are as a person. Why? If you're selling your services, people kind of know product to product. They can really kind of measure, well, this product does this, this does that. But when I'm working with a person, I want to know who that person is. So you really have to define what are the unique qualities. Uh, Dan and I learned about this process called Ikigai, um, and he'll, he'll post that on, in the chat for you to really figure out what's your unique value proposition. So you start with that, um, but also part of that is who are you as a person? If you're going to start a conversation in this party, who are you going to start it with? And what are you going to say to them? So let's say um, Irene loves horses and she sees somebody that she saw at the stable in that room. And she goes across that room. She starts talking about um, horses and her passion comes through, right? She's just lit up and talking. And now this person that she's talking to about horses, who also loves horses, is talking to her. Now they have this connection point. And then the people around them start hearing them. And they may not even know they're talking about horses. They just see this passion and this energy and they are drawn to it. So that is what I'm talking about to clear through the noise. So are you only going to sell the horse people? No, you're probably going to sell to all kinds of people, but it's finding those connection points. And I think they're best when they're an extension of who you are. Um, so when I have agents come to me and they go, yeah, I stopped playing golf and I'm crabby. And I'm like, why aren't you playing golf? That's where your clients are. Go do life with people. So online, how do we do life with people? Right. And so stop selling them all the time and let your marketing, your, your social media be an extension of you. What are you passionate about? What do you love? Most people are buying a lifestyle. You're an architect, right? So in the, as an architect, what lifestyle are you selling to be to people and and talk about that lifestyle not in a salesy way but in an informational way in an entertaining way things like that health and wellness the same thing you know share your story people want to hear your story and then they're going to connect to that um even if you share your story about what happened to your business in COVID and why okay so you're going to connect with people in a really truly authentic way so it's who are you drawn to? So we weren't, we're going to talk a little bit about who your client is in just a second. Um, what would you want, if you're in a party, who would you be drawn to? What do you want to discuss? And where is that point of connection? So write those things down. Um, and here are some of your clues. What do you love? What are you passionate about? What are the biggest things going on in your life right now? Um, are you an empty nester? Do you a soccer parent, you know, are you um, sad because you can't travel right now? I have somebody and I'm helping them write their newsletter and they were supposed to go to France as they do a big family event every year. And they had to go to New Bronzeville, Texas, uh, not quite France. So we played off that for a couple of reasons. One, her, her clients are going through the same thing. They're like, what are we gonna do? We can't do our big vacation. And then she talks about all the little treasures she found in New Bronzeville so that those people are like, oh, well, look, she gave me something of value. She shared with me these ideas that I can then take and implement. So she's not selling them anything right there. She's connecting with them through a digital medium. Um, and then what challenges have you overcome or are you working to overcome right now? As I uh, shared a minute ago, one of you said you health and wellness has been just cut, right? So how do you then share that story with people and then convert that one to connectivity and uh, community and then getting heard? Because there's a lot of people that are 
are right there with you. And then figure out how to pivot your business from there by hearing what they have to say. So we've got somebody in the insurance industry. Uh, we teach uh, first to 12th grade how to study and get good grades. That's awesome. And right now, I would imagine you're really busy if you're reaching the right audience and, and talking to them what they want to hear. So let's talk about that. Next slide, we're going to talk about who is your client? Who are you talking to? Um, so for those of you who have been in business, I want you to take down a piece of paper and start writing out who's your average client? What do they look like? Where do they shop? What do they do? Um, create an avatar, right, of that typical client. Doesn't mean every client, but the average client that you are involved in. What's their lifestyle? What are they doing? Because those are going to give you the clues of what to talk about with them, right? And to get heard by them. Maybe you haven't really been, you haven't loved the clientele you've had. Maybe you want to go to a different clientele. Well, one, make sure that's a clientele you're able to connect with. And two, really assess the why and then start changing your, what do they like? What do they want to do? Maybe you've just kind of dabbled into a clientele over here. And so you want to then start connecting with them more. So the way you do that is you got to get all about them. Um, as our friend Bruce Turkel says, um, what are they interested in? How can you connect with them on your level from an authentic place, right? If you hate horses, don't go talk to them about horses because it's going to come through. And that's why you should be doing the things you're passionate about doing because when you're passionate and you're lit up and you're in high vibration, you draw people to you. And usually you draw like-minded, like-hearted people. So um, where are they? Where do they live? What do they do? Where do they travel? Okay. These are all connection points. These are all conversation starters. And remember, we're not doing our conversation like this most of the time, we're doing it digitally. However, Dan will tell you, Lilia will tell you, you should be doing as much video as you can. If you really wanna be reaching people, video, video, video with text to go with it. Google is awesome. They will actually uh, do the translation for you or convert it into text, make sure you proofread it. Um, you can also, for those of you super Instagram family friendly, blah, 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 Instagram friendly, you, the most powerful way to use video on Instagram is to make sure that you put the text over it because most people won't actually listen to it, but they'll see you talking, the video stops them and they'll read. So, you know, so remember, this is how, this is our new conversation, right? Um, and that's why you're here on this hack because he's going to teach you how to use those digital tools really powerfully. So who are they? What, where, where do they live? Where do they love to go? Where do they love to travel? I think there used to be, I don't remember which kid show was who, what, where, why, when, and how, right? So what, what is their op occupation? What do they love to do? What is their lifestyle? And what are they seeking? What is the rub for them? What are they looking for? So health and wellness, get out there and get video out there as much as you can. Talk about your health journey. Talk about the COVID journey. Talk about the alternative op opportunities out there. Use video. But remember, you're talking to people who are seeking the same thing. I had a, I had a doctor talk to me yesterday and he said, I have this product. I want to, maybe I should stand outside hospitals. And his assistant and I both at the same time said, no, you, you want the person you want the anti-vaxxers, you want, you know, you want people that are looking for healthy alternatives maybe to um, include on their vaccines or their medical health, but you want to go where they are. So where are they? What are they looking for? What are they seeking? So um, as an architect, what kind of design do you provide and who's the person that's looking for that and what are they seeking in that design? And a lot of times what they're seeking is a real partner. And that's why we go back to who are you? What are you passionate about? What do you care about? Because people want to connect with you on a really personal level. They want to like you and they want to trust you. So as you share those things, they're going to connect you. What they're seeking in an architect is a partner, somebody who's going to take their vision 
and bring it to reality and care about what they say and hear them and listen to them. So how do you tell that story? Um, and then the last one is the why. Why are they looking for it? What is, what is the why that drives them? Connect with them there. The, the why, if you, if you, there's several books on this. Uh, the why is when I'm coaching people and I'm uh, consulting people, their why is huge. And it's the thing I always go back to, you know, why are you doing this business? If you're just doing it to feed your family, well, that's, that's a good reason. But typically the why that really um, engages people is that thing that's deep inside you, the why you can't stop doing it, the why you have to do it when you get up, right? And that's where you want to connect with people and you want to find their why. Um, why do they want a new house? You know, right now, um, as you know, real estate is hotter than ever, partly because people are like, hey, I can live wherever I want right now. So as an architect, I want to talk to that topic right now. They're also having different needs of their home, right? Because their home is now where they work all day. They spend way more time in the home than they ever probably hoped to. And so they're ready for a change, either for a new house or to reconfigure the house that they have. Um, again, on the wellness, why do I care about my health right now? Well, gosh, if my immune system is low, I have a higher risk for COVID. Or if I have, what's the key word we keep hearing? The people that are highest risk have underlying issues. Well, how that key word go all over that sister underlying issues. How do I fix those underlying issues so that I'm at less risk? So do y'all, is this making sense or is this? Yeah, so I wanted to pause for a sec because this is such an important point. Um, can I put you on the spot? Yes. So Yvette, what is your why? Mm. So my why um, is I love connecting people to who they are and um, to all the possibilities and when I wrote Lily's Deliciously Different Day and I decided to create a, really a platform around it, my why was because um, I saw us destroying each other over our differences. And I saw in 2017, we had Me Too movement, we had Black Lives Matter, we had school shootings, we had a string of suicides. And I thought, oh my goodness, how do we, how do we, change this and the word value kept coming to me if we value ourselves and we value one another and we value the earth most of the issues we talk about today are non-issues and that's my why is to bring a sense of value to every part of creation and to connect people um, through that value yeah that's beautiful um you know i actually a lot of people who are used to hearing this have seen me do why exercises and articulate it. Um, you know, Yvette and I uh, are really aligned on this point. Um, I actually wanted to show you, I don't think I've ever showed you guys this. So I have this thing that's taped on my wall. There's a little bit of painter's tape. And you can see, here's my why. Can you read that out loud, Yvette? Connect fast and deep. Then move on. Uh, no, the my why. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta move my chat. My why. I champion the underdog so they can transform their lives. I love that. So, the reason that that was really important for me to figure out was, like, why am I working so hard to serve small businesses and micro enterprises when all of my advisors were telling me to go up market to fortune 500 companies. And, and I just didn't feel like motivated to do it. Like I knew that there was more money there, that it was an easier path, that my life would be better. I would make more money. My wife would be happier, but I just couldn't get myself to do it. And, and so I felt like a failure. I felt like I was a bad businessman. And, and so then I started telling myself a story that I'm a bad businessman. And then I did this why workshop with this amazing dude named Cesar Quintero, who's a, a local resource for us here in Miami. And he helped me understand 
that the reason that I was liking working with amazing business owners like Michelle Sagalin and Ariel Bis Biscayar and and all the amazing people, Eddie Edwards, who are uh, Julia Musho, uh, Joy Sexton, Irene Fernandez, Immaculate Paul, all these folks who I just felt drawn to work with because I felt so enriched by it. it wasn't because I was a bad businessman. It was because for my whole life, from when I was a kid going to my mom's inner city school and watching her teach art to high school dropouts, um, to volunteering for the Special Olympics, to when I was a journalist covering uh, immigrants and poor schools rather than politicians and celebrities. There's always been this through line for me that I found the underdogs more compelling. I, I found them more interesting. I wanted to spend time with them. I wanted to learn about them. I wanted to help them. And it's something that my mom taught me Right? She didn't teach at a private school and make a lot of money. She taught at a public school in Philadelphia with the hardest kids, the hardest cases. And it's just sort of part of who I am and how I was brought up. And it's been consistent for my whole life and it will be true for the rest of my life. Now, I'm a, I'm a, 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 I'm a white male who went to Princeton, who grew up in a high income suburb of Philadelphia who has had every advantage that society and upper middle class and two loving parents can give. So am I an underdog? No, but in my head, I've always seen myself as an underdog. And I've always preferred to be for the work for the team that was less likely to win. So when I was working at NPR, I didn't work actually for NPR, I worked for Marketplace, which was like the sibling. You know, when I joined uh, a, a big energy company, I didn't join ExxonMobil, I joined Liberty Power, the largest Hispanic owned energy company. And so there's just been this consistent through line that even despite my privilege, I worked for and on behalf of the underdog, I champion the underdog. And once I understood that, I have felt so much peace and my business has exploded because now I'm serving my customer and they're aligned with my values. And so this five week you know, free course that we got grant funded really came out of the realization that there are other paths to business success that aren't through the Fortune Fives, the Fortune 500s. I could actually find business success by, and still serve the people I care the most about. And, and, and then now this is marketing. What I'm doing right now is marketing. I am marketing at you guys, right? I'm telling my business story to make you feel trust and loyal to me. But this is also true and I'm being honest and vulnerable. And so it doesn't have to be an either or. or. And that's really the key. That's why we started with those first prompts and those first things that I talked about, because it would not come off. How much, if he was just tell, selling us a script and selling us a product, we would all go, yeah, Dan's just a good salesman. But I don't know about you all, but I had tears. I felt his passion. I felt his compassion. And that's why you have to connect with who you are and then know who your client is and find those connection points. The reason Dan and I are like, we were like brother and sister, like the first time we met through this big group virtually, because we had the same heart for people. And so we connected deeply. And I get so excited whenever I hear him talk for that same reason. And I always want to refer people to him and do business with him because we are like-hearted and like-minded. So that is why your story matters. I like was crying just a minute ago, Julie Jeffries, my goodness, tell that story. We all need to hear that story, especially right now. If people were ever not worried about their health before, they sure are now, right? And what we're not hearing enough is what are you doing for your overall health and your long-term health? The fact that you cured a brain tumor that they told you was inoperable with food, like we all need to hear that story. And here's the thing, if you tell that story, 
if Dan tells a story, it's not going to come off the same. Dan could sell the product probably all day long because Dan's a good salesperson, but that's not the powerful part. And that's what's, where social media has changed the game because you cannot get away with BSing very well. So, so I invited Julie Jeffries to share her story verbally. Julie, is there any way you might be able to turn on your video? Oh, there you are. I did. <laughs> Hi, guys. Yeah, so um, thank you for letting me share this. Um, I wasn't prepared to talk, <laughs> so I guess it's a good, uh, a good test of my ability to tell the story. But yeah, um, just very quickly, in um, 2013, I went in for a pair of glasses. I came out with a prescription for radiation to the head um, as I was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor. Um, it's actually not a, an uncommon brain tumor and it is benign, thankfully. But, um, but my, um, my story was that of course, or is still that um, this brain tumor can grow and there's no way to actually remove it from where it sits, which is in a very unusual place. And it's very delicate because it actually shares the blood source with my optic nerve. Um, and there's not a lot of, there's not a lot known about this particular um, tumor sitting there, but the issue is that, um, that uh, any damage to the optic nerve is um, thought to be permanent. That the optic nerve is one of the few nerves in the body that can't regenerate itself. So um, when they told me that I needed to do radiation to the head and I thought, you know what, um, I've spent a lot of money on my brain. And I kind of would like to keep it intact because the doctor was sitting there in a four hour appointment, very daunting appointment telling me, hey, um, don't worry about this. I can give you a pill for this and don't worry about that. I can give you a pill for that. And, and you can take these pills all your life. And I said, um, I don't take Tylenol. And I had two huge babies, natural birth with no, <laughs> no anesthesia. So I'm not one to take pills all the time. And I don't like this solution. And I thought that there had to be something better. So I started researching and, um, and you know, I knew that there was a connection between food and health. And I came across this, this theory of um, plant-based that was really just starting to get going in terms of, of whole food plant-based living, um, which is taking it a step beyond vegan um, and really eliminating sugars, eliminating anything that's processed, eliminating all these extra bad chemicals that are in our bodies. And I said, you know what, I'm pretty close to that. I can do it. And overnight I changed. And within about two weeks, I started to regain my vision. I'm wearing glasses. These are reading glasses. I, I mean, I'm, I'm turning 50, so I need my reading glasses, but I'm talking about my, uh, my long, my, um, distance to see far. So uh, my sight to see far. So, um, when I, um, I did this change to my diet and um, went 100% in, I noticed that in about two weeks, I started to um, regain some vision. I had been declared legally blind in one eye. I started to regain some vision after about two weeks. And a month later, the doctor said, we need to do an MRI. We did that. They said, you're going to have to do radiation. I said, I don't think so. Something's changed. I can, I can see. And they said, that's impossible. And I said, well, let's see. So I went in, had it tested. The lady tested me three times. My husband was sitting next to me. He couldn't believe what he was watching. The lady didn't think that I knew what she was doing when she retested and retested and retested. And I said, so what do you think? Can I see? And she said, um, I think that the other doctor is gonna be very excited by these results. And um, it turned out that yes, I had regained uh, partial vision at that point. And then I felt this relief and, um, and I went on to um, say, okay, I'm gonna continue my diet because my theory was it can only get better. And um, shortly thereafter I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So talk about a kick in the pants. Um, I, um, probably was the first one that the doctor didn't have to talk to about diet and, and um, what I was putting into my body when we went through all of my treatment plans for breast cancer. And um, I got through my breast cancer, but because of the breast cancer, I cut out soy. And when I cut out soy, the recovery of my sight skyrocketed. And by the end of the year, I um, actually had 20-20 vision for the first time in my life. Um, and the doctors 
they, my doctor was, said something to me very interesting. One doctor told me, I said to him, do you think it's the food? And he said, no, Julie, I don't think it's the food. I know it's the food because there's no medical reason that you would have had that recovery. And my other doctor said, well, I don't know what we're doing, but we should just keep on going because it's doing the right thing. <laughs> so I said, okay, we'll keep going. And, um, and so that's my story. And, you know, people started getting a hold of that and knowing what I had done and asking me to help them. And then finally I said, you know, I, I better get some more education behind me, some credentials behind me. I did some certifications um, around plant-based nutrition at Cornell and I started doing this, but um, yeah, now COVID came and I used to teach classes um, in person and, and do, you know, theory and, and cooking and, and everything. It was a lot of fun, but I found it very hard now to move forward in a virtual environment because it's, it's not the same connection. It's different. So I'm, I've been struggling with that. So that's my story. And that's where I'm at with my business, which is called Not Your Mama's Vegetables, by the way. That's cool. So who, who wants to do business with, with Julie? Everybody, right? Um, because she's real, she's authentic, she's an overcomer. I want this girl to champion for me, right? <laughs> um, so Julie, you can still do that same thing through technology. And if you, and Dan will teach you how, um, there are classes out there taught by people that don't have the story you have, and they're doing very well with it using digital. I'm a people person. I like to do person to person, but right now we, it is what it is, but I still think you have a powerful business. You just have to shift it and figure out how to find those people. And we're going to talk about that <clears throat> a little bit more. Uh, Lily, if you'll put the slideshow back up. So let's use Julie as an example. And I don't want to, what I love is I, Somebody else said they're an architect. Those seem like the opposite, but it's still the same thing. Like I said earlier, I want an architect that's going to partner with me, who's going to hear me, who's going to, who is compassionate and vulnerable and open. So anyway, that's, um, so how, now we know kind of the who, what, where, why, what, and write that down. Um, I don't know if Dan's going to make these slides available, but I hope you're taking notes. If not, you can reach out to one of us and um, we'll send it to you because I want you to take notes and really figure out who that client is, where your connection point is. And so who's Julie's client? Well, anybody obviously that's going through cancer that um, wants results that are unheard of, right? And that it's going to change their life. Also the people, again, we're in a, we're in a time, Julie, where the not just the people of cancer that have it, but anybody that's like, oh my gosh, if I have anything underlying, even if I don't know about it, I want to get my health back up. So um, same with, you know, architect. I want, architects are not necessarily known for being super personal, but they're super creative and they're in the wrong architect can cost you a whole lot of money. So why do they want to use you? And you want to talk about that. And the thing is, you want to captivate your audience, right? How many were just captivated by that story? I say hands everywhere. Of course you were. I mean, that was so powerful and it was captivating because it was real. It was honest. Dan's story was captivating. Everybody was just, I mean, commenting and, you know, like they were drawn in that captivating isn't just about like, whoa, look at me, jazz hands. It's about drawing somebody in. And both of those stories, because they were real and they were authentic and they were vulnerable, drew us in. I may or may not know what either of them are selling, but I know I want to do business with them. And that's the difference of where marketing is now, right? It's personal. So whether in person or through your marketing, you first have to captivate your audience. How do we do that? We tell our story. We connect with people on a really open, vulnerable place. So that um, after captivating, we are going to um, go to the next slide. Connecting. So the way we're gonna connect with them is we're, we're gonna have our story, right? We're gonna be honest, we're gonna be vulnerable. And then we're gonna find those connection points, whether it's horses, whether it's small businesses, Dan and I um, are, 
passionate about the underdog. We're passionate about people seeing their full potential. So we connected on that area, area, but I had to listen to him first, right? And then when we serve people and we know people, then we can connect with them in a really deep way. I wrote a story about a little girl that wishes she could be like everyone else. Whenever I just tell the story, people grab my hand and go, I remember the first time I felt that, you know, and then it never left us, right? <laughs> we're always comparing. Um, but the point is that the world doesn't work if we're all the same. So there were connection points when I would just tell even a little bit of that story. But then now that I know this person had that same issue, um, let's say I go to the, the architect and um, the reason my friend referred me to the architect was because they had somebody that really messed up their, their drawings and it, it created just the snowball effect. And so now this guy was able to fix it. That's why I want to connect with him, right? Um, I put serve here, but I want to flip that too. So Julie, in a way, by, by sharing that she needs help relaunching her business, has now engaged all of us into being her champions. Sometimes the greatest way to endear ourselves, and for those of us who grew up in the 80s and before, um, this is not comfortable for us. But the greatest way to have a champion and to have a referral source and to have somebody on your side and have loyalty for a long time is to ask them for help. So if Dan asked me, hey, that, and he has, we, we have, we actually are overdue for this conversation. Hey, Dan, how can I help you in your business? And Dan says, listen, I'm really struggling with X, Y, Z. What am I going to do? I'm like, how do I help you? Like, what can I do? You know, I'm going to refer you. You know, all, every one of you have that story. And so if you're starting a business, tell people, hey, listen, I'm so excited and here's why I'm starting this business or here's why I'm relaunching this business. Will you help me? I need your help. Um, that brings greater loyalty than, they've done studies on this than anything else is by being vulnerable and asking for help because we all want to be somebody's hero. So, but also serving them. How can I serve you? So, you know, when Dan and I talk, it's a, it's a two-way street, right? Dan, hey, how can I help you? Dan, asked me the same. And, you know, within days we're making connections for each other and, um, and sharing and giving advice. And, um, and so now we have an even deeper bond and I'm going to refer him more and more business, things like that. So, and then you got to know them, you got to listen and know. So I had a so, question about that. Um, next, starting next week, I'm going to be doing a training for storefront businesses. A lot of these storefront businesses are in terrible trouble. Uh, the reason I picked storefront businesses is because they're the ones who are the most endangered by COVID. So how could they leverage this fact that asking for help is a powerful form of messaging without making them seem like they're begging? And it's, you know, I think right now people are so happy to champion the small business. Um, you know, Amazon's become a necessary evil. And so part of it is one, that they let people know what they do for the community. And then two, say, hey, help us keep the doors open and come join us. We're gonna do a celebration. And they make it something that again, connects people, brings them to a sense of purpose, right? We all wanna go back to that, why? Um, share why you opened this business in the first place. You know, let's say, um, let's say Julie had a storefront and now, you know, it's in trouble. If she shared, she went back to sharing that why. I'm even more intrigued. I want to meet this woman, right? And so um, going there and it's, I think sharing your story is the most powerful thing you can do. And, and your why, why did you open that store? Well, here's why I was traveling and I saw these incredible things from, you know, Cambodia and these beautiful people who were creating it. And so I thought I wanted to find artisans like that all over the world and, and create a little collection or, you know, Julie tells her story and um, 
maybe she has a vitamin store. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, like this lady isn't just selling me product. You know, she's changes lives. So I want to know her. So telling your story and telling your why, I think is one of the greatest ways. And then asking people saying, listen, I need your help. We, we need to keep our doors open. And, you know, we're, you know, Texas is a big, you know, um, small business advocate. We're a business, you know, friendly state, um, for better or worse sometimes. But when it comes to small business, when somebody shares, Hey, we're trying to keep our doors open. Um, you'll see floods go. Oh, and then after connecting, we want to curate. Maybe you're curating recipes or you're curating um, beautiful aesthetics of architecture. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going on those two because they're so extreme, but um, I know some of you have other businesses. I'm gonna flip back and kind of look um, at what y'all are doing but curating the visual. So again, we're talking about digital marketing for the most part here, curating stories, curating um, giveaways. So I'm big on, you know, I coach realtors. So they do pop buys, if you will. And some of them don't want to knock on people's doors or even if it's their client, but they'll do a pop buy to a business and they'll take something that will make an impact. So curating things like that, curating your content, curating the visuals, so, and having a really consistent, again, this is a whole nother class on creating that brand and that look and all of that, but curating all the different things that kind of bring people together and tell the story. So um, let's say I'm talking to, um, how do you communicate that in a 50, 15 second video? Um, I, so I'm Michelle on that, it, to communicate your story and your why, I would, I would go straight to the why in a 15 second video. And because people are gonna care more about the why than the what. Um, and then do a longer video that you can direct them to. Uh, but you know, go with the, with the why. Uh, Medicare insurance sales. So you know, that's, it's just get, that's getting in front of people. And that's telling them how, you're going to be their advocate. Why do you do Medicare insurance sales? Why did you get into that? I'm guessing you're passionate about people and about helping people and helping them decode all of the confusion around that. And so tell that story. Um, new entrepreneur trying to launch a new cell phone accessory, magnetic phone grip. Very cool. Um, why? What's So that's where you want to when you're getting in the more technical is what's the rub, what's the pain point that people are experiencing that you're fixing. So if that's the connection point right there. Um, but also why can they trust you and your product? So you want the personal, but you also then want, what's the pain point you're fixing, right? Um, for Kathy, she's fixing people's underlying health issues through plant-based diet. Um, with the architect, he's helping people, one, design their dream, but also have really solid um, concepts that are going to be timeless and that are going to serve them. So find that rub, find that pain point. Why do I need a magnetic strip on my, on my phone? Um, creating. So the, thank you, you just led me right into it. What is the white space? What's the rub? So maybe you're trying to figure out um, one how to keep. So this is two. This is a two, kind of two tier. There's the what am I going to sell people, and and why. Maybe I know I did my icky guy and I really know what I'm good at, but is there a need for it? Well, that's you're going to find the white space. You're going to find that rub. What's the pain point that you can fix uh, for somebody? Uh, what problem do they need solved? And so Dan, he already told you, he already knew he loved the underdog, right? Um, but he comes from a media background. What could he do to, you know, what do they need that he has that he can, that he can solve? And so he knew that your marketing and your, you know, 
your storytelling and all of the different elements. Most small businesses do not have the money to go hire a marketing firm and to get their name out there. So Dan's like, I know I can teach them to do it better than they can probably hire a service to do it. And so he started with that. And then he built upon that because he really listened to go back to listening to what those small businesses needed. Look, now he's like, all of a sudden, this the storefront is struggling and I got to help them. How am I going to help them? And so that's what he's doing. Um, and then the second part of that is um, maybe you have your product and maybe you, you just have it, don't know how to tell the story that answers that question. So if, if Kathy just said, well, yeah, you know, I, I like a plant-based diet. Anybody want to learn about plant-based diets? Well, maybe I might be interested, but if she says, Hey, I know Yvette, you're struggling with, um, sugar cravings. What if I told you, if you made these changes that that could cure that? See, she now has told me, she's met me at my pain point, right? Instead of just telling me what she does and what product she has, she's met me in that pain point. Does that make any sense? Um, I'm reading, hold on, I'm reading. So um, walk into a room and network. So now how do we do it online to Mercedes point? How do we find those people? We're going to talk about that. And how do we find the lifestyle, shopping trends, interests, and potential clients? Um, we Let's talk about that. Go to the next slide. Collaboration. So y'all are- uh, quickly address uh, that one point, which is, about walking into a room, we have to somehow project through this screen and connect despite it. It's exhausting. It takes five times as much energy for me to present into a screen as it does when I'm in front of a room. Like I'm an extroverted person. I'm a highly trained presenter from broadcast journalism. The hardest performance of my life has been into a Zoom. And it's just the world we're living in. It's just like, it sucks, but it is what it is. And so, you know, I'm exhausted at the end of the day. Um, not just because I'm working really hard, but because I'm putting so much of my life force into this, these experiences, these video calls. It's, it's just, it's not easy, but that's what you have to do. You have to find a way to connect digitally. You know, all those of you who have your videos off, you have no idea how much you're losing right now. Uh, you're probably multitasking. You know, you're probably not paying attention. You're really not getting out of this what you could be. You know, I turned off my video for a minute just to eat an orange, but ultimately leverage the technology to make this as human as possible. All marketing is human to human. 99% of the businesses I work with do not transact online. They create awareness and interest online. And then the connection happens in a phone call. So it's possible to have a lot of success in this very challenged environment, but you got to really change how you do things, you know, show up to work, show up to webinars, ready, put on your video, engage like you were there in person, you'll do better. And as far as like, how do you find those people? Again, going back to our first questions, who are they? What do they like? What do they do? And then go on Instagram, go on LinkedIn, go on Facebook and connect with people like Google for me, because I have children's books, you know, I'll Google, you know, moms of toddlers or teachers or things like that. Google people that are in that same, who else is talking to your client? Okay. So if I'm an architect, who else is talking to my client? Well, probably a builder, probably a realtor, you know, probably an attorney, like not that the attorney's talking to them about that, but they're talking to that same clientele. So connect with the people that are already connecting with your audience. Um, and then, you know, start that dialogue with them, do a one-on-one -on -one with them. Hey, how are you reaching out to people? Collaborate, ask online. Hey guys, what are you looking for? You know, um, 
what are what are you struggling with right now with COVID and get a conversation going and collaborate uh, because that also helps you define your brand. Maybe, um, so I recruit agents as well. And I was losing a couple agents because they went to these other firms because the firms talked about their sassy technology. And I, we all have the same technology, by the way. But the thing that was interesting to me, I don't talk about technology. Why? Because real estate, first and foremost, is a people business, and which is why Zillow can't take our business away because it has always come back to the people to people. So how do you connect with people? And like Jeff said, make it about people to people, about human interaction again. And here, I, there's a whole class on this and I can't go into it in too much detail. Maybe we'll do a class on it is using Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram as a way to personally connect with people. And what I mean is start surfing your pages and don't just, you know, like the puppy dogs or the kittens or the things like that, but look for people that are celebrating, who are struggling. Maybe there was a death and do, don't happy birthday them on the wall. That's about you. Call them, text them. I do, I sing with the little emoji on the iPhone, but connect with them in a real personal way. So let's say, I don't know what you do, um, Mercedes or M. Kelly. Um, but, um, let's say you have, there was a realtor one time that saw somebody post, they were bummed because their favorite mug broke. And so the realtor sent them a new mug and said, nobody should start their morning without their favorite mug. Do you think she has a lifelong client? So right now use technology as a way to connect people. And thank you for asking this question because I meant to go here and I, and I didn't, I want you to look at your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Instagram this week and find five people that you can reach out to and have a real human interaction with them and let them know you're thinking about them and carrying them. My agents have been so busy. I had one agent go, I'm just, I haven't called to sell anybody real estate. I just called to make sure they were okay. See if I could take them toilet paper or soup or whatever. And I'm inundated because all he did was reach out and care about them. And just like your story matters because it's personal, when you reach out and let's say Julie sees that Dan is having some health issues. He's, you know, Dan's pretty open and honest and he shared that he's having some health issues. What if she sent him a text or a card and said, hey, listen, I am so sorry you and your family are going through this, please, you know, let me know if I can do anything. You're such a bright light in my life. You think that's going to make an impact on him? And you're not doing it to manipulate. You're doing it because that's all of you care about people in the first place, right? And so you're using social media as a way to just love on people. And I don't know about you, but I think everybody needs that right now. You want to grow your business? Find five people this week on social media and reach out to them in a real authentic way. You know, I, I love that message, right? Like good marketing is being human. And I got to say that I really found my voice as a business owner because of COVID and because of Black Lives Matter and because of connecting to my why and, and, and basically expressing outrage through my business. Mm -hmm. um, there's this thing called radical empathy that I've talked about. Radical empathy is feeling for other people and doing something about it. And I'm doing something about it with my business. And the second I started doing that, which came in the form of BizHack Live, which is a free weekly webinar that we've done, my business has improved. So the more you give, the more you get. And the more that you let your special light shine, the more likely you are to attract people who want to do work and business with you. And it's really been scary to get naked, if you will, uh, with strangers and talk about these vulnerable things. But it's also been life and career transformative, and it's really changed the trajectory of BizHack. So 
Yvette, I just wanted to ask you uh, if you could just wrap up in the next five minutes, just for time reasons. Uh, this has been a fantastic presentation. Yeah, well, that was it. This is the last slide. Just continue daily, keep going, and work all of these things into your habits. Reaching out to people, staying top of mind, sharing your story, sharing your why, um, asking other people their why. But that last thing really, I think is the most powerful thing you can do right now is to find a way to meaningfully connect with your sphere, with your clients right now. Even if it's just like, hey, how are you? The numbers are going up, are you worried? Is there something you need? Um, they, a lot of times they already know what you do anyway. And your social media, you're gonna tell them what you're doing, but connect in a meaningful way with them. Any questions, uh, y'all have been posting some things and it's just been great. Um, and I'm evecrove.com. You can find me um, on I'm pretty open on Facebook, Yvette Grove. And then also uh, my deliciously different world is my um, children's platform. But let's see, we've got a few more. Oh, you are so welcome, Irene. Thank you for joining. Um, Y'all are so welcome. Hopefully Dan and I can do more together. If you're not a part of BizHack, get get involved. You really want to then know the technical side as well as um, the marketing side. Dan's got you covered. Yeah, you know, Yvette, it's marketing is as much a mindset as a skill set. And that's like one of the biggest things that we try to teach. People come to my course because they think that they need to know how to market by using Facebook or and what we try to teach them is that it's not about the tool, it's about the, the sentiment. Uh, and, and the tool is just like a hammer. You can build a house with a hammer, you can put a hole in the wall. So that, that's really the kind of message that we try to, to send is that marketing is not about tools. It's not about skill sets, it's more about mindset and how you approach your communications. And if you do you know, a good job with that, the, 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 you know, thing the, the good, um, good things will happen for you and your business. Um, well, let's take what, is there one more question that you want to take before we uh, wrap up for the day? Cause I know we've got a few minutes. Positive things. Thank you. But to that point, um, I tell my agents all the time, you know, if technology sells real estate, we're all out of a job. Um, people sell real estate, people sell architecture, people sell wellness. Um, they sell iPhone attachments, you know, we are in the people business and right now people need people more than ever. So show them you care. I think Dan, like Dan said, the best marketing is being human. That is so true. And it's never been more true by the way. Yeah. Well, you guys have to check out her book well, before they go, go ahead and throw your book in the chat and, um, Lily's deliciously different world. Um, if you go, I'm going to put my website on here. Perfect. Yeah, check it out, guys. It's a beautiful book, especially if you have children or are looking for a gift. Uh, so to wrap up, again, um, we're going to be starting uh, the How to Find Customers Online free five-week uh, training uh, courtesy of Pinecrest and the Federal Cares Act. Um, next week, we're going to have uh, an amazing session on exponential marketing. I hope you join us for that. We're going to take a week off for Thanksgiving, and then I'm going to do a session on free tools to find your ideal customer online. Then we're going to talk about Google and how to take uh, your presence on Google to the next level. Uh, that's with Joe Laratro, uh, an amazing SEO expert. And then finally, we'll end the year with the Digital Marketers Graduation Party cap off uh, what has been a challenging year. Nobody's going to miss 2021. Um, so guys, please, uh, I hope you all um, gr grasp the opportunity in the crisis. Uh, look for the opportunity in these challenges and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you all. Thank you, Yvette. Really appreciate it. Michelle, great to see you. Maria Luisa, great to have you here.